All right, this one looks fun. Let's try it. Um, on this one, I'm gonna go with the ratio test. So the ratio test would say, why don't we try, why don't we try the ratio test? So we'd have x to the two times n plus one plus one all over two times n plus one plus one factorial times two to the n plus one factorial all over x to the two n plus one, right? That's the ratio test where we've taken a n plus one divided by a n. And we flipped the bottom one actually because it was a fraction. Let's clean it up a little bit. So that would give us x to the 2n um, plus 2 plus 1 uh, all over, I distributed that to all over 2n plus 3 factorial times 2n plus 1 factorial all over um, x to the 2n plus 1. Uh, cleaning it up, I think I can factor out that x squared out of there, out of the bottom. I can, and that leaves the x to the 2n plus 1. Because so if I added the, I multiply these, I would be adding the, the pi exponents, which would give me that. Here I get 2n plus 3 times the next one, 2n plus 2 times the next one, 2n plus 1 uh, factorial. On the other hand, I have 2n plus 1 quantity factorial all over. I'm working on this part now x to the 2n plus 1. That's kind of nice because then a bunch of things cancel. And this cancels with that. And we're left with just uh, this piece right here. So we have... Uh, so we now we need to compute that limit. The limit as n goes towards infinity of x squared all over 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2. Try the plug-in method, you get that times that, which is clearly that. And so we get that this, the original series, looks a lot like, behaves a lot like summation of a power series where the, x, the ratio is zero or pretty close to zero. And for which x's does this happen? Does it, x, does it happen for x equals a thousand? Yes. Does it happen for x equals a million? Yes. It happens for any real number x. And so that will converge. So we have that it converges for any real number x. So the interval of convergence would be from negative infinity, positive infinity, of course, not including infinity. You gotta keep it real. That's nice. That's nice on many, many different levels. If you were to write that out, it looks a little bit crazy. Let's write it out in yellow. And let's make it a little thick. So um, if you were to write out x equal for, as, as n starts at 0, as n starts at 0, this becomes just 1 factorial, and that becomes just 1. So you just have x over 1 factorial plus. As x equals to, to 1, the bottom becomes 3. Um, 3 factorial. The top becomes x to the third, right? Now suppose we were to add something a little bit more here an a to 1 to the n. So that would give you a negative that. The next one would be plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial. So I'm doing a slightly different version of the example. Why? Because it's super super famous. Um, this would be 9 over 9 factorial minus x to the 11 over 11 factorial etc. If you were to continue on this I was trying to advertise the bridge earlier. This is such a huge huge idea. This baby right here is a long polynomial. It's really, really long. It's actually infinitely long. It turns out to be something amazingly famous. Remember that bridge I told you? It becomes sine of x. Ooh, chew on that. I know, huh? It's amazing. Does that look like a polynomial to you? You can get with this or you can get with that. Amazing. Um, that's why this is such a famous one. Oh, and specifically what we're doing is we're answering these type of questions. For which x's does it converge? In this case, it converges for all x's, which translate into for which x's is this bridge valid? Well, it's valid for all possible real number x's. Amazing. Chew on that. I'll give you a thousand dollars if you bring me a more beautiful, deeper, more elegant idea than this from any of your classes this semester. Booyah. All right, come back. We'll do more examples.